All right, Jesse on Fire, welcome back to the channel. We are going to talk about Conor McGregor because Conor McGregor has some takers. He's got some guys calling him out because that's rare. He never has people calling him out. But in this case, the people calling him out are actually pretty interesting. And one of them, maybe he could fight. Maybe it's, it's low risk enough, but a big enough name that he could actually fight. Because I know what Dana White is doing is he's keeping him on the shelf because there is a, there is a world over here where if he's the next challenger for the lightweight title, regardless of if it's Gaethje or Khabib, it'll be the biggest pay-per-view ever. And if it's Gaethje, and then Conor beats Gaethje, and then he fights Khabib in a rematch, which now is for the belt, except Conor's making his first title defense, right? So Dana, it's like putting Conor in there right now is such a gigantic gamble. And, and, and Dana's like, from a business standpoint, why would I do that, right? And Conor's like, I need to fight. Fine, I'm retired. Like he's he retired out of... Uh, you know, out of frustration. By the way, before I get into this, if you guys don't mind, I always forget to do this. If you guys don't mind, would you please like the video, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell? That part I'll leave up to you. I would very much appreciate a subscription. A subscription, a subscription. How come no one ever says it like that? Uh, and then ring the bell so that you hear when I upload. I upload every day, every single day, okay? I'm doing this for you guys. Now I'm doing it selfishly because I want to build the channel and I want to be able to do this all day, every day. But I do upload every single day. So you'll get notified when it comes up and you guys can watch it. But please, no matter who you are, it, hopefully I've showed you enough in the first 30 seconds that this is entertaining enough to at least give it a like. So the algorithm is like, let's show this to other people. I would genuinely appreciate that, you guys. I am not joking. Thank you. I'm probably gonna put a note on the camera so I always remember to do this because I always forget. This is like the first time I've ever remembered. As a matter of fact, can you guys just do it for that reason? Like show me that that asking at the beginning makes a difference. Then I'll really always remember. All right, anyway, so we're gonna talk about Conor McGregor. So here it is. Conor, like I said, retired out of frustration. He's pissed, okay? He's pissed that he doesn't have a fight. He wanted to fight. And the, the April card, see like everybody's like, oh, I thought what happened to his season? What happened to Conor McGregor's season, huh? And the answer is COVID happened, okay? So I'm not, I don't wanna bury the lead, all right, real quick. So who is calling him out that I think he could fight, and I'll break all that down, is Rafael Dos Anjos. He wants that fight, that makes sense. And then Gaethje is talking about their potential fight, and I'll break that down as well. But first off, where Connor's at, right? Connor said that he wanted to fight a season in 2020. And so everybody's breaking his balls, they're like, this guy said he's gonna fight a season. He has, now it's June, he hasn't even fought another time. Well, what happened is, coronavirus, right? He said that someone in the Tony and Khabib fight was going to fall out and he was going to slide in. So he was training to be ready for that fight. And he was right, right? He was right. Khabib, I mean, you know, it was because of the pandemic, but he was right. And, uh, but he had already made such a huge thing about everybody in Ireland locking down. There's no way that he could, you know, he could take that fight. So coronavirus happened. That's not, that's not on him. You know what I mean? And so now I imagine that Dana is looking at the chessboard and he's like, if I put Connor in there right now with no crowd, so first of all, I'm gonna make $20 million less than I would make with Connor when we get crowds back. And on top of which, the risk is astronomical because if he loses, then I lose out on this first pay-per-view, which is him and Gaethje or him and Khabib, and then potentially the second one and the third, you know, like the, the whole thing all, all relies on Connor not losing before that, the winner of that fight can fight again. It's absolutely critical, okay? So my concern with Connor is about, can he keep it together? Like, can he keep it together given the circumstances, okay? And I'll tell you why I do have hope for him staying focused, being the same Connor that came out in January and, and is just the best version of himself. It's, it's gonna sound weird, but this is, this is why, right? In one of the clips when he was leading up to the to the cowboy fight, after they were uh, they were rolling, it was like a rolling session. He stopped and he gave one of these, and I saw that I was like, "Oh, that's good. That is good because Connor has some very self destructive tendencies. One of the reasons that I relate to him so much, okay? Like Connor, people are like, "Oh, well, what's a you know, why is Connor so it's such a big deal to you? It's like, well, first of all, I've already talked about this that I Connor was my least favorite fighter. Okay, I hated Connor after the Aldo fight. And it was in between Nate Diaz 1 and Nate Diaz 2 where he literally went from my least favorite fighter to my favorite fighter because of how he handled that loss and then how he handled the build up to the next fight. Just all of it. He loses to Nate Diaz. He has the world by the balls. He took it on short notice, two weight classes up from, any, from, from the weight class he had fought in already that he was a champion in. He could have completely written that loss off and just been like, listen guys, it was a, it was a freak thing. It was a terrible matchup. 
two weight classes up. Now I'm going to go defend at 145. I'm going to go fight for the 150. We could have done anything. And he demanded an immediate rematch at 170 against Nate Diaz. And I was like, wow, that is that is the representation of exactly what I'm looking for in fighters that I want to root for, right? Just the 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 warrior in him, you know, the warrior. He could have he could have demanded that they do it at 155 too. I mean, that would have been even reasonable. Okay, the only reason we did it at 170 is because it was short notice. Now it's now we're gonna do it at 155 so that we can do this you know, like the way that it should have been intended to be. Nope, he wants it at 170. He just wants the time to prepare for that opponent. And then the kicker, he refused to do any press. And that's when I was like, oh shit. I was rooting for him be just because of that. Because he ever, you know, he was a big press monkey. And then he came in and he won. And I was like, sold. That guy. That is my favorite fighter now. But I see so much of myself in him, it's unbelievable. In and I don't mean that like in terms of like, <laughs> you know, he's the biggest star in the world. I see so much of myself in him. But it's partially his ability to be clever and sharp on the mic like me you know but that's kind of where uh you know that's kind of where my contributions end i can be real clever on the mic real clever all the time even at my worst pretty fucking clever but you know if i had a trade where that would match up well that would be best case scenario then i wouldn't have to say i'm the goat on the mic son goat on the mic because i could say i'm the goat of whatever and then i can go out and prove it this is a little bit more subjective you know what i mean where connor has that skill and he is an incredible fighter, incredible fighter, and he eats pressure, okay? That I can relate to, but here's where I'm really going, is this. He's incredibly self-destructive, okay? That's what I'm really talking about. He has massive impulse control problems, and his impulses tell him to fuck every girl that moves and punch people that are mean to him and do drugs and stay up all night and then just bask in the, you know, bask in the attention that he's getting from everybody. Like, I can relate to that. And I've said this a million times, okay? If I would have come into tremendous money in my middle, mid-20s, okay? I would have gotten to 40 bankrupt and also with no options. Like, I would have destroyed my life. With I, I'm, I am 100% certain about that. That had that happened then, I was not ready for it. I, I am grateful, actually, that my life kind of progressed the way. No, I mean, I went through some shit. We can talk about that another day. But like, all I'm saying is I understand Connor. You give him a hundred million dollars, make him the most famous guy on the planet for being a fighter. Like not just super famous as an athlete, for being a fighter, you know? Like uh, just the biggest badass you could possibly be. Everyone knows you're worth a hundred million dollars. And I mean like, imagine what the world looks like to you, right? It's like every girl that rolls up on you like, hi Connor, and they're looking at you like, you can literally take me in the bathroom and use my body as a, as a blow up doll. Just basically, I'm up for anything. Things I have never even considered doing with my boyfriend. Who's outside? I'll let you do. I will literally let you do whatever you want to me. And I have a friend. I can call her. I mean, this is, honestly, this is this would be a, a treat for us. And then every guy comes up. They're like, Connor, dude, you go, go get Nate Diaz. Get him in the rematch. I love Nate, dude. You're my man. Oh, look, I got a tattoo of you on my arm. Connor McGregor. Like, you know, how long do you think that would take before it it broke your brain if you're wired for self-destruction, right? Because that's what I'm saying. For me, I would, <laughs> like I could see myself accidentally punching an old man in the head if I had been doing blow for two days and then he refused my shots and told me to go fuck myself and I wasn't thinking straight and I was just like, this, I mean, this is the kind of thing where, I mean, I don't know if you guys have ever done things that you regretted on a level that actually felt like physical pain on the inside, but I have done those things. Like I've done things where when I came out of whatever the fuck I was doing, I literally felt like physical pain thinking back on shit that I did when I was not, you know, myself. Because it's literally, that is what it is. You're literally not yourself. Like you're just like this, this walking fragment of yourself. It's like, still have my ego, <laughs> like still have my temper, but don't have any of my logical sense, don't have any of my humility that I normally walk around with, it's just, it's all the worst of me that is brought out by lack of sleep, drugs, sex, and egomania, right? So I would imagine that when he actually came to grips with the fact that he had punched that old man, now, I, you know, to be honest with you, I bet you that he saw the video when everybody else did. Because how would he have seen that video? How would he have seen it? The guy hadn't sued him. 
and they said that he settled it, you know, or whatever. So whatever he did, it was like it was settled before. Like it had been, it had happened eight months before. Like, you know, dude, you punched an old man last night when you were blacked out. That'd be embarrassing, you know. And then just right as you kind of started to shake it off, or it was five months before, I mean. And then right when you started to shake it off, it's on TV and everybody sees it and you see it for the first time and you're like, it just must have, I mean, it literally must have felt like, must have felt awful. But now he has grounding. And that's my whole point. All of that was all bringing back to now, it's, you know, if, if Connor was doing one of these and that's something that's stuck and that's what keeps him off the Yale and that's what keeps him off of, you know, getting drunk, fucking every girl that he meets and, you know, just being a, a self-destructive asshole, then that is awesome. Okay. That is basically my entire viewpoint on religion is, is this. What do you use it for? I mean, what, like, what, what do you, what does each person use it for? If you use it because, you know, it centers you and it makes you a better person, it gives you a code to live by and it gives you a belief system for, for the afterlife, that's fucking great. Like, I, like, good. I would never, I'd never be one of those people that throws rocks at people over their religion. If, if that, I mean, just period. I just wouldn't, you know, unless you're using it as an excuse to, you know, blow something up or something, right? So like with Connor, I, I applaud that and I hope that is the case. With me, it is my wife and babies, you know? It's amazing how uh, looking at a, a, a tiny female human being that is the fruit of your loins and, and is 100% reliant on you and thinking like, what would happen if I didn't take care of this thing? This thing that I love so much, it hurts. And then you think like, I would literally kill a thousand people a thousand people to get to someone who even looked at her with ill intentions like that's actually not a joke like if i found out that someone had even had a thought about hurting one of my kids i would fucking murder them with my bare hands fact fact so keep that shit in mind if you're some fucking weird pedophile that's watching my kids on tiktok or something i'll fucking kill you anyway uh so so yeah so that's how that's how I stay centered. But um so with Rafael Dos Anjos, I was I was thinking about that matchup and how big of a risk it would be for Connor, and I have basically decided it's zero risk. <laughs> or close to zero. I think Connor runs through Dos Anjos. I don't think it's even close. You know, and I realize there's a very, very simple, simple uh formula for figuring out whether or not Connor's gonna win. Or well certainly you will know, yeah, if he's gonna win. Now if he's going to lose, like if there is a chance that he loses, that's kind of more complicated. But figuring out if he's going to win breaks down to this on its own. Does his opponent have incredible ability to take the fight to the ground? Mm, yes. Okay, then he's, then, he's, then he's got a good shot against Connor. If, he, if he's incredible at taking the fight to the ground. Okay. If not, does he have a granite chin that is almost inhuman? Okay. If yes, then he's got a good shot, Nate Diaz and Khabib for number one. If a fighter has neither of those, then Connor's going to win. Period. Like this is that, it's that simple. Look at any fighter that he's gonna face and ask yourself, is this guy incredible at getting the fight to the ground? Or does he have a chin that is borderline on inhuman? And if they don't have either of those things, no matter how good his other skill sets are, Connor's gonna beat them. Period. That's how dominant he is on his feet. That is that is honestly how dominant he is on his feet. And uh and Gaethje, Oh, I'm sorry, not Gaethje. Uh, we'll get there. But Dos Anjos has neither of those things. He has, he has good stand-up, but he doesn't have a granite chin. And he is great on the ground, but is not a tremendous wrestler, as we learned multiple times with guys who took him to the ground and fucking wore him out, right? So I, Dos Anjos will get knocked out. He'll get knocked out. Eddie Alvarez knocked him out, and Connor hits a lot harder than Eddie Alvarez. And uh, if Eddie Alvarez was able to penetrate... Rafael Dos Anjos' uh, defense at a time when Rafael Dos Anjos was very, very dominant too, Connor will get through there. Connor will knock him out. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. But at the same time, I just am not necessarily convinced that that would enhance the upcoming title fight that he's going to have, right? Like, I, so he knocks out Dos Anjos. The only reason for the business to do that is because they want to keep Connor happy. You know, from a business standpoint, it would be idiotic. Idiotic. An extra twenty million dollars from the from the crowd, uh, from the gate when there's a crowd that you're not going to get if you have him fight right now, and 
there's nothing but risk. If he loses, then then you miss out on these other ones. So, make literally make no business sense at all. And I know Connor's pissed. That's why he's retiring. He's he's really pissed because he wants a fight. But um, but yeah. So Gaethje also came out talking about Connor, and he said something that I absolutely agree with. Part of it, he said he's going to dirt nap Connor. But he said that. After three rounds, it's going to be hell. That is a fact. Okay, here's the deal. So I'm going to make a prediction about this Connor versus Gaethje fight, which will end up being correct. Okay, I think Connor will knock Gaethje out in the first or second round, and we can get to that. But if Connor does not knock him out in the first three and a half rounds, Gaethje is going to hurt Connor before he finishes him. Like Connor can take a shot, but Justin Gaethje in the fourth and fifth round against Connor McGregor in the fourth and fifth round. That is a not fair. I'll, I'll even throw it out. That guess straight up not even fair. Look at Con- like go watch the Tony Ferguson versus Justin Gaethje fight, and then watch the fourth round. Watch the fourth round of that fight, and then go watch Nate Diaz versus Connor part two, and watch the fourth round of that fight, and then imagine Justin Gaethje fighting Connor McGregor. Those versions of each other, Gaethje will obliterate him, obliterate him. Okay, now. I still am not sure if it's because Connor doesn't train at altitude, and maybe he does now. But I've I have heard from many, many reputable sources, you know, like like the, some of the best coaches in the world, that training at altitude is mandatory in order to be able to go five rounds. Now I don't know about that. As a matter of fact, it was Khabib's dad that said that, who I would consider a very, very credible source for this kind of thing, right? And Con- as far as I know, Connor doesn't train at altitude. Maybe he should, because if, if Connor could figure out a way where he could go five rounds at the same pace that he goes in one and two, he would be unbeatable to anybody except for someone like Khabib. I mean, plain and simple. That's his only weakness. Like, Connor in the first round is so dominant, it's fucking unreal. If he's fighting against a guy who doesn't have amazing takedowns, just literally watch, I mean, in all honesty, watch his entire career, his entire career fucking career and watch every single first round against a fighter whose specialty is not taking the fight to the ground it's a level of dominance that is basically unheard like there's no he has no equal he literally has no equal literally has no equal the first round in every fight of his career when the fighter is not a specialist in taking the fight to the ground so you got chad mendez is he, you know, in round one, Chad Mendez did really well. Connor was fighting with a hurt knee, but Mendez is a great, you know, he's a wrestler. Took him down with great striking. Khabib, same thing, right? Remove those out of the equation. Dude, like, I mean, let's go through them. Cowboy, 40 seconds, knockout, right? Alvarez, obliterated, obliterated Alvarez. Nate Diaz in both fights. Connor in the first round, annihilated. Nate Diaz, obliterated, especially the second fight. First one, he won too. The second fight, he made Nate Diaz look like he was a... I mean, it was in in now in the, in the scoring, now it's a 10-8 round, 100%. I think he knocked Nate down three times in that round, at least twice. Okay? Jose Aldo, right? Uh, go before that, you get... Uh, what's his name? Um, oh, fuck. Dennis Seaver, same. Go before that, Dustin Poirier, same. Go for that Max Holloway, same. The, um, Bur- not Burrell. Anyway, whatever. But every single, I mean, literally, there are no exceptions to this rule. First round, he's un- he's the most dominant fucking fighter in the first round ever, if you take away wrestlers. So, Gaethje is going to have Trevor Whitman, though. Okay, so a big, big, big factor here is I almost don't even consider this fight Connor versus Gaethje. I consider this fight Connor versus Trevor Whitman because if Gaethje just kind of goes in there and uses his traditional boxing and Muay Thai skills and doesn't go in there with a game plan Connor will knock him the fuck out bet that bet that but Trevor Whitman who is the best striking coach in in by far and I mean in the best MMA striking coach in the world for sure he is going to game plan Connor and I can guarantee you he's watched every one of Connor's fights 500 times 500 times he knows every step connor's ever taken he knows every step one of his opponents has taken even in fights where it looked like connor was completely dominant he's watching those he's watching those fights to see if any slip up any any minuscule clue for a for a hole in connor's game that he can exploit and game plan because gaethje 
is the ultimate tool that he can shape. Gaethje has said out just openly, he's like, I am a, I am just the canvas Trevor Whitman paints on it. Like, I just do whatever he says. I do not think I do exactly what he says. And that is why Gaethje is very dangerous to Connor, even in the first and second round, because, it, I mean, he's very fast. He has surgical striking. He's super fucking strong. He has great leg kicks. He has, he has a skill set that's great. It's just that, that, you know, those strikes that come from the same angles all the time, you know, but, 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 say, you know, where Connor knows the angles. Historically, Connor picks those guys apart easily. Like, like, again, I mean, like I said, picks them apart, picks them apart. And with Trevor Whitman game planning on the footwork, the approach, all that stuff, that's dangerous. But at the same time, Connor on his feet, this is the thing that no one is really talking about. We have no idea what he's got now. We have no idea what he has, which sounds insane, but it's completely true because he fought, listen to this. So he fought Floyd Mayweather, right? Did incredible versus how everybody thought he was gonna do. You know, revisionist history is that, oh, yo, Mayweather destroyed him. Okay, he destroyed him. You think that he, he planned on missing every punch he threw for the first four fucking rounds? Okay, I realized he was standing in front of him on purpose, but I mean, he threw a lot of punches and Connor slipped him and countered. Like Connor made him look average in the first few rounds. You know, then Mayweather had game plan. I mean, Mayweather's obviously a way better boxer, but ultimately, whatever. But bottom line is this. In that fight, Connor learned that he has no inside game, okay? So I learned this actually from Keenan TV, right? He did an excellent video on this, right? K-E-N-A-N uh, TV. He has, a, he has a bunch of Connor McGregor videos. I'm not 100% I'm sure which one it is. But maybe actually I'll tell him that I posted this and then he can, uh, if he posts this in the comments, he can, he can do it and I'll pin it. But uh, he had an excellent video about this, about Connor's weak inside game. We're like, you know, he's super weak on the inside. And then how he acknowledged that after the Mayweather fight, because that was, that really worked against him. And then it, he showed a ton of footage of him training that, training to, you know, be good on the inside. And, you know, all you have to go on really is watching him hit the bag. But his step in left hook to the body that I've seen is very good and very, very powerful. He did not have that punch before. But, you know, that was it seems so long ago that people are like, oh, well, no, we've seen it. It's like, no, you haven't. He fought Khabib and that entire fight was on the ground. And then he fought Cowboy and destroyed him in, you know, 40 seconds without showing anything on his feet except for a head kick and the shoulder strikes. Right. So. He is going to have a whole other game that people do can't can't game plan for. Literally, can even Trevor Whitman cannot game plan for it. And that's a tough. I mean, I bet you, Trevor. I mean, listen. Okay, I would consider myself uh, pretty fancy when it comes to uh, knowing what's going on with people emotionally and inside their heads. But uh, in terms of fight game planning, if I know it, Whitman knows it. <laughs> There's not a single thing that I'm going to come up with that he doesn't already know, right? But he knows. He knows he's going to be up against something that, something new, right? A new skill set that, so, but yeah, that, uh, that is a very exciting fight. But th I mean, all that we need to happen is Gaethje needs to beat the best lightweight ever, <laughs> win the belt, prove Jesse on fire as the best MMA analyst of all time, because I've been calling Gaethje over Khabib since February. Check my TikTok, son. One of the very first ones that I ever did. And uh, listen, for the record, I love Khabib, and I think Khabib beats Connor. Okay, I think that if, you know what, I should actually stop, to be honest with you, the only reason that I keep saying like, Gaethje's gonna beat Khabib is because if he does, I wanna be able to take credit for calling it. <laughs> if we're being honest, that's the truth. But I do, I, I, this is what I think. I think Khabib, of all of his opponents, Gaethje has the best chance of beating him out of every, by a mile. Like I, he is the worst matchup for Khabib by a mile, okay? Amazing takedown defense. He's the only person who might be able to keep it on the feet and do you guys think Khabib's going to beat Gaethje in a stand-up fight? Because I don't, right? It's just that simple. Uh, but yeah, so he needs to pull that off. And then Connor fights him for the belt and Connor beats him. And then we get to see Khabib Connor after Khabib lost to Gaethje. And then Connor beat Gaethje. So the impl like that rematch, can you imagine the buildup to that fight? Because right now there's this implication of, or this, this idea that Connor can't beat Khabib, right? It's like, I mean, yeah, you know, we're all going to tune in for the rematch, but whatever, like, Connor's not going to win. I mean, that'll be, that will be the, uh, the overarching opinion. If Gaethje beats Khabib and then Connor beats Gaethje, 
right? Because simpletons don't understand that matchups make fights. It's simpletons, it's like, whoa, Gaethje be, could be, and then Connor be, oh my God, Connor versus Gaethje. Now Connor will be viewed completely different in that rematch. Completely. That's a whole other video I should do, actually. Um, but yeah, I'll probably cut it off here. I've probably been talking for what, like 30 or 40 minutes? What am I doing? But uh, that is what I got for this. Again, I would very much appreciate If you guys watch this far, can you, you know, throw a like on it for God's sake? I mean, Jesus. I mean, unless, unless you're just watching as, you know, to torture yourself, I would assume you liked the video because who the hell would watch me talk for this long if you didn't? But uh, I appreciate you guys either way. Love you guys. Subscribe, ring the bell. Peace.